Chapter 2, Welcome Back I trekked back through the forest, careful to avoid any more wild animals. When I reached the spot where I previously set up camp, I decided to take a quick break to eat. I unwrapped my bread and cheese, poking half-heartedly at their grainy texture as I stared at the remains of the campfire. As I was about to take a bite, an odd feeling of discomfort and glanced sideways. Mm, am I really imagining things? I sighed. <sighs> Kerr, I know you're there. You don't have to hide. There was only silence at first, but I heard a rustle and turned my head again. Seriously? You just moved to another location. I hope you weren't going to wait until I, fall I was asleep to steal my stuff. Sh shut up! I wasn't planning to do anything like that. Kerr reluctantly emerged from behind one of the bigger trees. His expression looked conflicted, and I could tell he did not want to be with me again. Awkward. Welcome back. Did you miss me? <laughs> no, but then I realized I wouldn't be able to find the next altar without you. Well, you're out of luck. I don't know the whereabouts of any other dragon caves, nor am I carrying the apple more apple tarts if you're hungry. There really is no reason to stick with me. You'll need to get another guide or find someone else that can help. But I don't want to go through the trouble of finding anyone else. At least not until I get my bearings. I have no clue where to go from here. A small idea formed in my head. Wait, perhaps I can accompany Kerr to Oliver. If I explain the situation to Mom, maybe she'll consider writing me the night recommendation letter. Right! Hmm. Then if you'd like, I'll accompany you to Barry. From there, we can travel to Oliver. It's a huge city. You could probably find directions to other altars there. Does that sound acceptable? He grumbled in agreement and sat down on the fallen log I was using, but near the edge to leave plenty of space between us. Look, um... My master, my master also asked me to interact with Heavenkind more, and I've already been with you long enough. Nice to know I'm tolerable to be around. And your master doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> he, was an, he has an interest in working with Heavenkind. I guess he didn't like it when one of his pupils didn't share his point of view. At least he was kind enough to curse you with some clothes. I didn't think Dragon normally wore clothes. Is that a spell, or are those genuine articles? Kerr tugged on his shirt as if suddenly aware of it. Uh... I think it's a spell. It won't wear off or anything, will it? I assure you the spell won't wear off for my clothes. <laughs> it's just that I don't want to glance back during, I don't know, the heat of battle and catch you stark naked. Sh shut up! That'll never happen. Jeez, why are you interested in seeing me shirtless? If you want, I can take these off right- Stay focused! Please no. I trust in the magical sustainability of those clothes, so please keep them on. Besides, they'll stay warmer that way. Is that why Heavenkind wear them? Something like that. I pulled off some of the bread and popped it in my mouth. Kerr watched briefly with interest before averting his eyes. Let me guess, you're hungry as well? Uh... I don't know what human, heaven, heaven kind consume, but I don't think I can eat what I normally would. I handed him the rest of the bread. He arched his eyebrows in surprise at the offering. It's fine, I had a small breakfast and I'll be back in very soon. Without bothering to inspect it like he did with the apple tart, Kerr crammed the bread into his mouth. I stifled a laugh since I had a feeling dragons had no concept of chewing. Propping an, eyeball, an elbow on my knee, I watched him with amusement. I also felt a little unimpressed with how dismissive he was towards me. Tease him. I lowered my voice to imitate him. <laughs> oh, Aurelie, I'm so eternally grateful. You're the best that Heavenkind has to offer, and I'm so glad you helped me, fed me, and led me to where I needed to go. Where would I be without your immeasurable kindness? Thank you. Kerr coughed violently as he tried to respond and failed, and I continued. I find a sweet, I feigned a sweet giggle and fluttered my fingers toward him. You're welcome. Oh, Kerr, it was nothing. You're welcome. After pounding his chest and swallowing loudly, Kerr tried to speak up. Shut up. What? Before he could start, I stuffed the last portion of cheese into his mouth. I kept my hand there and we exchanged a meaningful look. His stare softened and I took a step back. It's nothing. You finish eating. I'm going to take a quick walk. I stalked off before he could answer. I approached the riverside, knelt down, and splashed my face with water, rubbing my forehead and cheeks. Then I inhaled deeply and ruffled my hair, careful not to snag my braid. <sighs> Maybe I should just I shouldn't have done that. 
A knight was supposed to be courteous, generous, kind, just honorable, and help those in need. And here I was, struggling to maintain a calm demeanor. There was something about Kerr's attitude that always got me worked up. Well, that and him showing some gratitude would be nice. Or was it wrong for me to seek it in the first place? I still have a long way to go before I'm more like Mom. How does she do it? I grabbed a flat, polished rock and stood up, throwing and catching it a few times while I pondered what to do next. First things first. Kerr will return to Barry with me. We'll need to stock up on supplies and figure out where the next altar is. Does he expect me to travel with him the whole time, or until Oliver? I wonder if I'm mentally prepared for this. Gripping the stone, I threw it into the water at an angle. It skipped a few times before disappearing completely. I bit my lip, not pleased with my three-hop achievement. I could probably get seven rebounds on a good day. I should get back. I wonder if Kerr already got impatient and left. Just as I turned to leave, I heard a loud splash and immediately whirled around, unseating my sword. Yeah! I angled the blade upward and wired my stance. Bursting from the water was a large serpent-like dragon with a translucent ridge down its back. Oh, pretty. It flapped its wings like fins, head extended, extended beyond the shore. I gripped my teeth, searching for a weak point, but kept my distance. Tightening my grasp on my sword, I looked at the dragon directly in the eye. It recoiled from my... When it saw my weapon, withdrawing its head, but made no further movements. It didn't appear to be hostile. I slowly seized my sword, but kept a firm grip on its hilt. Mist formed around the dragon, I stepped back, unsure whether to retreat or wait. It seemed to vanish as the mist overtook it, and I squinted. Moments later, I spotted a, a rather hazy figure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I blinked as the lethe, heaven-kind person appeared before me. He had similar ears as the water dragon, so I assumed they were one and the same. He also had a brilliant tea-colored hair, which I have never seen before, teal-colored. He fidgeted with his hands, and he gave me an apologetic look. Are you okay? Uh, I didn't mean to, um, frighten you. Oh, sorry. Oh no, it's, it's fine. I didn't mean to threaten you with my sword. It's just sort of instinctive, and it's understandable. I didn't know what my tensions were, and you probably look, looked intimidating. We both stopped and exchanged an awkward smile. <laughs> At first it was a giggle, but I soon started laughing, then rubbed the back of my head sheepishly. <laughs> he joined in with his own gentle chuckle, and the, any tension we felt from our encounter dissolved instantly. Um, so, what are you here for? I'm looking for someone. He should be around here, and we would have unique heirs like mine, and... You mean Kerr? Are you Kerr's master? Oh. Me? Oh, no, no, no. I'm actually a pupil for someone else, but I know his master well. He raised his arm and glanced at the sleeves, tugging on them before ins inspecting the rest of his clothes. It was then I could see his long hair tumble over his shoulders, complete with a flowing purple ribbon. You look fine. Ah, you even transformed with a braid already in place. That's cute. Thank you. The <laughs> heaven girl, there you are. I have a name. Kerr approached and gave the newcomer a superlicious glare, who balked and glanced shyly away. The hell? I heard a large splash and came to check. Who are you? I'm Lamari. We've met a few times. Kerr gazed at him so intently that Lamari squirmished, squirmed uneasily. Uh... Uh, nope, don't know you. And how did you find me anyway, Ilmaria? Um, Ilmari? Well. I overheard our master's talking and Master B Bedrose mentioned you or so I... Uh -huh. Let me guess, they sent you. Um, sure, sent, they sent me to supervise your assignment. I'll go. So please take me with you. Kerr and I exchanged glances. Look, Ali, Lamari? Whatever. I don't need this isn't to exactly out. something I want to do, nor do I want company to slow me down. Unless you can fly and can instantly take me to the next altar, I'm not interested. Go back and tell our masters I can handle this myself. B but I sighed and stepped in, raising a hand to touch Kerr's shoulder. You don't need to. Kerr finished from the physical contact, and I mentally kicked myself for forgetting already. Right, right. No touchy. Anyway, I think Ilmari will prove useful. 
He did say the Masters wanted this, right? They placed their trust in him for a reason. Right. I promise. I promise I won't be a burden. And if I am, well, I can go back. Kerr grumbled and walked downstream, waving dismissively. I don't care. Do what you want. Just promise you won't lecture me or do any of that nonsense. I already got it enough. Promise. Amari's smile was so bright that I couldn't help but grin as well. I turned to him and offered a hand, and he tilted his head curiously. Looks like we'll be traveling companions, at least for a while. Um, this is an offer to shake hands. It's a greeting between heaven kind. Amari extended his hand, and I gave it a firm shake. Pleased to meet you. I'm Aura Lee. Pleased to meet you, too. Thank you. And thank you for convincing Kerr. Thank you? Pardon? Thanks! You have no idea how long I've waited to hear those words. I have a feeling you and I will get along swimmingly. Swimmingly? <laughs> he glanced back at the river and chuckled. Is this heaven kind humor? Something like that, but it usually elicits more groans than laughter. Come on, we should probably get going before Kurt decides to ditch both of us. I don't have any more food to lure him back. Ah, about food and heaven kind needs. I researched a bit, but I'm not completely familiar. Don't worry, my dad makes food for a living, so you'll learn a lot about it. He nodded happily. With that, we quickened our pace before Kerr could yell at us to hurry. I wonder how they react to entering a heaven kind town. 